it's a vibrant community. It was wonderful when I was here and it still is. It's people not only in Ithaca, but people around the country should know that great people like Frederick Douglass and Harriet Tubman and Eleanor Roosevelt and George Johnson actually came through here. Um, the history goes that uh, Frederick Douglass and Harriet Tubman used to meet often at the in the basement of the Amy Zion Church, mm -hmm. and that was where they held all a lot of their meetings about whose house was going to be what and who was going to go where and. Uh, just some of the coordination of the Underground Railroad. I'm just overwhelmed sometimes when I, when I stand up in that poop pit, Sunday after Sunday and week after week, to know of all these people that came, came before me and the slaves have actually been a part of this church. My great-great-grandfather uh, came through from North Carolina. He and his brother were Webster, and they were runaway slaves and they came up to the Underground Railroad uh, to Ithaca, to the, to the St. James Church there, and, and they got them to the Canadian border because people were still being recaptured and set back down south. I found out that this particular home was a home where uh, many slaves who were escaping would meet. And uh, right upstairs here, before you enter the sanctuary, that room is called the Harry Tutman Room. So she, she had a significant impact on this church as well as Frederick Douglass. This is a letter on the wall here that was uh, written by Abraham Lincoln. This is an authentic letter that was actually written by Abraham Lincoln. You see a signature there on the wall. We begin to really value um, where we lived as we learn more about the history. Wanna tell a story about a little old town Now it's a story, the south side of town. If you wanna get down, south side of town. Now y'all listen to singing right here with me. All of the African American entertainers that were brought in by Cornell University mm -hmm would ask anybody where the folks and they say downtown Elks Rest and that's where they came to socialize. The Elks Club where um, as you were a kid a lot of um, African Americans went and it still is pretty much a um, African American club. Well I think as you were growing up you were, your main point was getting old enough to come in here. Wow. And everybody wanted to be able to come into the Elks. Now in the Elks Rest I met Duke Ellington Jerry Mulligan, uh, Langston Hughes. That's where the dancing and the uh, social activity was going on here. Uh, Mr. Gibbs is a man, one of the main. Mr. Gibbs? Yeah, one of the main people in, the, in Ithaca. 
Okay, and what about what about Mr. Gibbs? Well, he 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 started. He was the first director of the uh, South Side. I was his secretary when Eleanor Roosevelt came here to dedicate this building, and this building was built. And uh, I took the minutes for her speech, and I didn't use the word. I was just out of high school. I think. <laughs> they asked Eleanor to come to do the opening of the dedication of the ceremony. The interesting thing is that uh, when she came, that the Southside Center was only half finished. Mm. It wasn't totally finished, but uh, they went ahead and had the ceremony anyway. And it was called the Serve Us League, mm -hmm. who put the contract together. And the contract, when I read it, was awesome. These were some very brilliant ladies who put the contract together with the city that the city would always keep it and maintain the center, mm -hmm. but it would always belong to, as in those days, we referred to the colored people. It was during the equivalent of what we have right now is HUD. Mm -hmm. At that time, it was WPA money mm -hmm. that established this building. Mm -hmm. That's right. And People of African descent, as well as Italian and Irish, built this this property here. The the name Southside Community Center Inc. belongs to no one but the community. The city does not own that name. And what was interesting about it is the only way that that contract can ever be broken is if the South Side doesn't serve the people of the community. And so that's why it's been so important that they've kept that Afrocentric theme and everything because they would be breaking the contract. I speak to a lot of older people, people my age, middle age, who talk about when they were young, um, all the activities that occurred here. Activities at the South Side, basically, we had. Um basketball team. We had two teams. It was South Side, North Side, and West Side house, and they had tournaments all the time. Uh, plus the South Side used to travel and go to Elmira, Binghamton, Syracuse, Albany, and have different tournaments mm -hmm. also. Wow. And it was uh, uh, Mr. Gibbs who started it, and then Mr. Townsend, and then Ben Dean, um, and all of it was in the course. It, it was great. It so whenever the guys were coming from out of town, you know, we had to be here. <laughs> and then they'd have a dance afterwards. And all the, we had more fun. And the one thing that, as a young kid, that we liked was always after our games, we had a dance. Those um, dances were here at Southside? Yep. Yeah, right in the gym over here. We had a good time. <laughs> that would be one of my worst punishments if if I didn't be, I couldn't go to the dance, and so I always knew I wanted all my chores done on the weekend, and I would do my best so that, you know, because it was an important thing, you know, mm -hmm. to socialize. at least seven black women who had um, beauty parlors. And there used to be a lot of businesses in mm -hmm. the South Side and in the downtown area, uh, black owned businesses. Mm -hmm. There were beauty shops, there was uh, a drugstore, um, there was a tailor, I mean a barbers. I think one of the contributors may have been, may have been, that a lot of the folks that we talked about that owned businesses didn't have children. Hmm. And they didn't pass the businesses to the children. I don't think for a long time that it's been the way it was when we were children. Mm -hmm. Festivals. Festivals were uh, tons of fun. Food. Um, entertainment of all sorts. When I was the director, uh, program director from 84 to 86, mm -hmm. I was responsible for uh, heading the, the, the uh, festivals and that was always an exciting time. They took place at just on this block um, from S Cliff Street down to Green Street and from the front of South Side down to Corn Street. It's mm -hmm. the heart of the community because the Amy Zion Church is there that I'm right in front of playing as the, the South Side. It's the heart of the, the community. That's why uh, when they have the festivals, it's surrounded in that area. People came from throughout the region to, uh, to sell their goods and there were always excited, exciting dances and, and poetry. And that's why I say South Side so important because South Side uh, makes sure every year that they do Juneteenth. South Side makes sure every year that they do Kwanzaa. South Side uh, 
offers that to the, the broader community. Back when I was growing up, a community was where everybody kind of looked out for everybody. Um, the South Side's changed some as far as you don't see kids hanging out in the neighborhood like you used to. And what I mean hanging out is not out looking for trouble, but um, myself, my friends, a lot of times we would hang out in front of the South Side. When I was younger, um, everybody knew all the kids. It was a lot of fun. I mean, you know, you knew most of the kids in the neighborhood and everybody kind of looked out for each other. As a child, if you went out there and you did misbehave, yeah. you know, you would get chastised by the person, you know, a neighbor, and by the time you got home, <laughs> your parents also Just waited. Mm -hmm. Yeah, waiting to, <laughs> to do their little job. You know? And our parents all were of the same mindset, that it was important that um, we as children and we as youth had somewhere to go and something to do. The fact that we were such a close-knit uh, mm -hmm. community, I love that. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing that happened in our community. There was respect for each other. Right. Our life was so nice and mm -hmm. just the way life ought to be for mm -hmm. children. And we truly lived in uh, what you call a village, mm -hmm. you know, where the village raises the village. You don't see that within the South Side now, which I like to see a lot more of. People stopped going to, to South Side after certain programs had been taken away. All the kids wanted to go there. I mean, that that was the place. That seemed to be the good times. I mean, just hanging at the South Side. I mean, they had cooking classes. They had adult education. The center is uh, the heartbeat of the South Side community. It um, was probably a bit more busy in the past than, than it is now. I don't think that the numbers are up as the officials would like it to be. But, but that can change. Uh, the kids see, you know, they're in a different world than we were. And we're going to have to address that mm -hmm. and start making changes. We can't stick to our old uh, routines and say, well, back in the day what we did, uh, it's not going to happen again. So. All of us have to become involved in it. You know, as, as parents, you have to look to see what your children are doing. Mm -hmm. When you go to that community center, if there's something that you dislike, voice your opinion about it. You know, maybe you can make a change. You can't make a change just looking and talking amongst ourselves here. Yeah, well, well, remember that old uh, verbalism that you said it takes a village to raise a child? Mm -hmm. you know, it takes this whole city to raise our children. You have to put your words into action. A lot of things we sit around the table and talk about, it never get done. I would like to see this lodge become more involved within the community, like they used to be. You know, it's kind of like they they close their eyes and back out. Well, now you should open your eyes and start walking back in again. You know, because it's a, we got a lot of youth out there, and they don't know which way they want to go. I believe that we can help them, and the only way we can help them is get out there and be in that community. I have always felt that if you're not willing to try to make a change then you shouldn't gripe about the change or not having a change. You build a community by helping everyone else and by helping everyone else people will turn around and be willing to help you. To make this a tight-knit community, for people to speak more to each other, um, whether it's the elderly people that are still here or the new people moving in. Southside must understand how important it is to the city of Ithaca because Southside community itself has been one of the cornerstones of this city for years. The center has been here since this building itself, since 1937. So it's been a presence in the community, a strong presence in the community for all those years. It has remained, as any community center, a place for activities, for after school programs, uh, just as a resource for the entire community. If, if people would really look at what it had to offer and what it had to give and help to do that, it would be, it would be just as rich and just as big. And, uh, I think that that's going to happen. I'm very optimistic about this community. Tell a story about
about a little old town Now it's a story The south side of town If you wanna get down South side of town Now y'all listen, sing it right here with me Give me some South side of town Cars, go fishing. Oh yeah, that's my man. 